All right. Amen. Good to have everybody tonight. Uh, give it a few minutes. Let everybody get on. And I'm going to be reading here for a few minutes while y'all are hopping on. Sister Candy, good to have you on tonight. It's been such a long time since we've seen you guys. I'm just playing. They were just here helping us get our video for last night's class loaded up so people will be able to go back and watch their recording. So, Sister Haley Van, good to see you. Brother Mike Sanders. Brother Glenn Fielding, good to see you, my brother. Pastor Rand. I have a net, y'all, flying around my head right now, and it's driving me crazy. So, y'all just excuse me if I look like I'm going crazy over here. <clears throat> if you guys will, as you're thinking about it, reach down there and hit the uh, share button. Let's try to go ahead and get everybody, get it available to everybody, just in case they might have forgot. Trying to do it myself. Sister Victoria, good to see you. Brother Ben, good to have you on tonight. Good to see everybody. Sister Jamie, good to see you. There it is. Sister Kirsten, good to have you on tonight. Thanks for joining us. Hope all is well. Brother Bert Bruce. Good to have you. All right, we're gonna go ahead and, uh, Boo, how you doing, Boo? Good to see you. We're going to go ahead and get started tonight. Uh, we are uh, in our, our third part three of our um, Divine Direction series. We are, um, last first week we talked about, you know, uh, starting the first thing you have to do and getting uh, the divine direction of God, walking in the divine direction that he has planned for you is uh, we have to start. We can't, you can't finish something you never start. And we talked about starting a discipline, starting a discipline life, starting with one discipline and then growing from that. Um, and then last week we talked about, we talked about starting and last week we talked about stopping. You start good positive disciplines, positive things in your life, things that are gonna grow you closer to God. But you have to stop those things that bring negative influence into your life. Stop the things that take your time away from God. Stop the things that keep and prevent you from moving in the direction God has called you to be in. The, the tonight's subject is going to feed off of the next step. So we are excited about that. But before we get into that, I want to just say a word of prayer. Um, it's so good as always to have you guys joining in on us and watching us and being with us, whether you're a part of Northwoods or you're, you've uh, been just 
coming on for the Bible study. We appreciate you regardless of where you're from, and we thank you for it and hope that something we are saying is blessing your life. Um, so let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. Pray where you are, and I'm going to pray here um, online with us, but um, please join with me. Father God, we just thank you. We thank you for your many blessings. Lord, it is such a pleasure and honor and just a, a great blessing to, to be a child of God, Lord, to be saved and redeemed by the grace of Jesus Christ. And Lord, set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I just ask you now to just have your divine way tonight, Lord. Show us the way that we must go. God, order our steps tonight. Let us walk in the light of your word. And God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to just guard us from the wiles of the devil. Guard us from his snares. Guard us from his schemes, Lord, that we may walk upright, God, being clothed with the full armor of God, knowing that we are more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us. And I'm just asking you, Lord, to just have a divine moment in our life tonight. We just ask these things tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Good to have you on, Brother David. Thank you for joining us. I uh, hope all is well. Um, so the third part of this series we're talking about tonight in divine direction is staying. We went from starting a discipline, stopping the things that prevent us from moving forward, and then staying on the course, um, not staying where we are. We God, as long as there's breath in your body, you're not finished. There's always um, more to do, more to accomplish. Um, it's like Paul said, you know, Paul said, you know, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. As long as I'm, I'm alive, you know, I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to share the word of God. I'm going to continue moving forward. If I die, then I'm gaining everything that I've preached. I'm gaining everything that, that um, I stand for. I'm gaining my Savior um, in that personal relationship. So uh, with that being said, um, you know, we have to stay the course. We have to continue moving forward. And we have to have what is called staying power or what I call staying power. Um, it's not very, always easy to stay the course. As a matter of fact, um, nine times out of 10, just throwing that number out there, but more often than, than less, you are going to to, it'll be easier to get off the course than to stay the course. To stay the course is going to take power. It's going to take discipline. It's going to take courage. It's going to take strength. Um, people quit things every day. People quit school. People quit marriages. People quit parenting. Uh, people quit jobs. People people quit dieting. Quit, people quit exercising. Things that they have put their mind to and, and at some point in their life said, I'm gonna do this, I have a goal, I have a vision. I have, a, I have something in mind, and then when hard times come, the easiest route most oftentimes is to get off the course. And, and listen, sometimes the best thing you can do is to let a chapter end so that you can start a new one. You, it is not always necessary that you stay the course, um, especially in worldly things, because maybe that's not God's intent for your life. So please don't take me wrong tonight when I, I tell you to stay the course, thinking that if you ever have to step away from anything, I, I mean, I used to be an evangelist and I had to step away from that to become a pastor, even though I still have to do the work of an evangelist. You know, I, I can't, I'm not free to just go preach revivals and to go fill in and, and to go do this and that, at all different churches everywhere. I had to step away from that because I felt like that course had ended and I felt like God had, had put a burden in my heart to not only preach to people and to lead people to the cross, but I, I felt like I was being called to spend quality time teaching and disciplining and, and, and not, not only disciplining myself, but helping other people be disciplined because if a disciple cannot be a disciple without discipline. Discipline and disciple. Look at the, look at the, look at the root words there. Dis, to be a disciple, you have to have discipline. And so God was leading me there. So it is not always necessary that everything you ever do, you'll do for the rest of your life. There will be moments in your life that you step away from things. That, you know, I've seen people, I've even experienced this as a pastor, people that have to leave the ministry that you are part of, not, not out of anger, but because God is maturing them and taking them to the next level. And one of the things we go by here at Northwoods is we do not base our success off of our seating capacity. In other words, we're not a successful church because we can seat a lot of people. We're, we consider success to be when we are able to send a lot of people. So our success is not in our seating capacity. Our success is in our sending capacity. How many people can we equip for the work of the kingdom of God? That is where we want to base ourselves. So um, jumping a little, little deeper into it, um, 
so you're not always required or by God to finish everything um, because what you might have thought was finish, a finish line, meaning I started this job, so I got to retire or I didn't finish. Sometimes you have to step away from things to step into new things. You have to step out of an old season to get in a new season. You have to step out of darkness to get into light. You can't take darkness and light together. You see, so I hope I'm making a little bit of sense to you. But tonight's focus is going to be on staying the course that God has planned for you. See, there's going to be different seasons in your life that you are going to have. You're going to have this, the season of your life where maybe school is of the utmost importance or your job, your career, or um, maybe you're at the brink where you're, you know, you're, you're, you're at the place you're, you're ready to get married, you're ready to settle down, you're ready to, to have a spouse and, and, and a man. As a man, you're ready to have a wife that you're going to love like Christ loved the church. Or as a, as a wife, you're looking for a man that, 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 that'll come in and that'll be the head and that you'll submit to. And you, uh, together, you guys will work and build a, a, a strong family that, that serves God and works out the kingdom. You know, these things are going to be yeah, there are going to be moments, and even when it's new, it's going to feel great and exciting, but then there's going to be moments on that course, whether it's a marriage, a job, a career, a school, there's where things are going to get challenging. There's going to be things that challenge you. There's going to be things that try your patience, that try your um, um, strengths, that try your abilities, and you are going to have to make a decision. You're going to come to a fork in the road and you have to ask yourself, should I stay this course or should I walk away? Because there are going to be plenty of times in your life that the best thing you can do is walk away. The best thing you can do is allow a chapter to end. But then there's going to be the other side of the spectrum that it may not look like the best option, but the best thing for your spiritual walk is to stay the course, even though walking away would be easier. Sometimes, you know, I, I use this analogy in, 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 a, in a service I preached a couple of weeks ago here at Northwoods, and I said, you know, I can't, there's many days for myself, and I know for my wife, and many of you can relate to this, that it would be so much easier for me to just leave the house for work one morning and never come home. It would be so much easier to walk away because of whatever may be going on, whatever situations, whatever problems we may be having, it would be so much easier to walk away. But the fact is, I know that I have that I have married her, that I have become one. So my option, that fork in the road, it turns into a one way. There's no other way because we are we have become one. I can't separate that now. I can't I can't walk away from that. Then I can't just give up on that. I have to stay that course and I have to fight the good fight and I have to run. The same thing with your spiritual walk. When you when you become unified and you become a, a, a blood-bought believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, you are not only taking his name upon you that and, and his forgiveness upon you, you are also becoming his follower. You are also becoming someone that is going to follow the path he has for you. And sometimes that path, oftentimes that path is going to get challenging because there is an adversary, the devil, who walks about all over the world seeking whom he may devour. And he's waiting on your path. He's waiting in your way. He's in the valley of the, of the shadow of death. He's in the valley of Baca. He's in the valley of dry bones. But he's also on the mountaintop of fasting. He's also in the mountaintop of, 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 of waiting to, to knock you off course in the moment of your transfiguration. He's also in your way when you are trying to follow the way. So you have to be ready and understand that there are going to be obstacles that you do not and you cannot allow the option to walk away or to quit to sound feasible even though it would be easy as a minister of the gospel it would be so much easier for me to leave this ministry leave pastoring and just i, I believe today i would be one of the best church members ever because i know what it's like on this side I know what I could do to help out my leadership. And I believe if, you know, the stress level would be so much less if I could just go back to being just a church member. But I know that that option would be the easier route, but it would not be the better route because the better route has me working out my calling for the Lord Jesus Christ, which means not only am I going to, to, to 
serve the kingdom of God, but there are going to be things that I'm served because of my obedience. There's going to be moments that I'm served blessing. There's going to be moments that I'm served, um, you know, just an abundance of his power and Holy Spirit, not because I deserve it, but because he's gracious enough that when I, when I become obedient, he is willing to go beyond anything I could ever do or give. In other words, I can't be good enough for God to bless me, but he blesses me because I'm trying to stay the course. I'm working hard. I'm pressing in and I'm not giving up. So how many has ever heard of the game Truth or Dare? Um, probably everybody. You know, I can't see none of you. So if you raised your hand, you probably just look goofy. Uh, but I'm just playing. But Truth or Dare? Um, I want to I wanna ask you, I want to change the game a little bit. We're going to take drop the T off of it. We're going we're gonna to talk about Ruth or Dare. Ruth or Dare, a story in the Old Testament Bible. Um, great question, Sister Jessica. How do you know which is the better route? And again, every circumstance is going to play um, a different role. Because as I said, you know, when I started my ministry, I started out as a youth pastor. You know, if I would have been bound and determined I'm never going to do anything else with a youth pastor, I would have missed the, the full journey God had for me. There came a time in my life I had to step away from being solely a youth pastor so that I could operate at another level. Not that it was a greater level because some people are called ultimately to serve their entire capacity at youth pastoring and have grown youth, you know, youth bigger than churches. So I'm, I'm not by any means saying that that was a lesser level, but I'm, that was not my full journey. That was not the full course God had for me. So I had to step away from that. And I did not know, and I, this is all I can do to help you with that answer, because ultimately it's going to have to come between you and God. And and, and it, you, you have to be very careful not to let your emotions get in the way. Don't don't just ask, what do I want? Because nine, a lot of times when our flesh gets in the way, what you want is not what God wants for you, because your flesh has enmity against uh, God or the Spirit. In other words, your flesh is not going to tell you, well, yeah, I think you should do the right thing. I think you should stay or, sh you know, should I stay or should I go? There, there, there's going to be moments in your life that you have to pray and you have to fast and you have to seek God and, and allow his spirit to speak to you. And when you have that nudging in your spirit, sometimes it's going to go along exactly what you want to do because, um, in all honesty, I wanted to pastor. I wanted to serve in the capacity in which I am today. But when it came time to move from the youth to, to associate pastor and to an evangelist, it was hard to make those transitions because of what I had learned had become familiar. And it would have been easier at that time to stay when I was supposed to step away. But the, the thing about it is, is you're not going to be punished and kicked out of heaven because you only preach to young people when he wanted you to preach to older people. When you share the gospel, whether it's young or old or new, sometimes we let the divisiveness of ministry make us believe we're not servants of Christ. Let me tell you something. If you if someone told you you should have been in India preaching, but instead you went to America preaching, if you preach, you serve the kingdom of God. And people in America need to hear it just like people in India and all over the rest of the world. So don't ever let the fact that your ministry is different than somebody else's ministry make you believe that you're on the wrong course or you're on the wrong path. You know, you, maybe you're called to missionary work, and that is great. I believe in missionary work. I support missionary work, but guess what? I'm a firm believer that if you can't reach your neighbor, why am I going to worry about sending you across the world? Because I know for a fact that our community needs us, and I can be a missionary right here, right here in Thomasville, Georgia. So I know I just went on a big rabbit trail trying to answer your question, just Jessica. Ultimately, it's going to come down to each circumstance and then prayer life with God and, and listening to his Holy Spirit, not allowing um, what man says you are supposed to do or should do to get in the way. Um, it's okay to seek man advice that might could help you, but make sure it's people that you trust, that you believe will tell you the truth and not just what you want to hear. And then on the spiritual side of it, ultimately, God is always, always faithful and just. So. He's the best advice giver I can give you today. So I hope that's helped you a little bit there. But getting back to Ruth or Dare, um, you know, sticking anything, any course out, we're gonna, I'm gonna stick on the spiritual topic today being this is church. Um, so sticking it out is, is never going to be very easy. You know, it w we wouldn't use the phrase sticking it out if it was easy. 
We would probably say, man, I'm strolling through my ministry or I'm flying high in the class. But sticking it out means I'm trying to hold on with everything I got. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing the walls to keep from sliding back. You know, uh, I got my hands dug down in the mud to keep from slipping down this muddy slope. Sticking it out. Staying the course. Pressing in. I'm not just going to go where people carry me on their shoulders and sing, um, you know, Hosanna and, and, and Allah Akbar and everything else that people like to sing when they carry people. There's going to be days when I find people in my path and they're not wanting to carry me. They're wanting to bury me. And I have to make my mind up that what's at the end of my journey is worth fighting for. What's at the end of my journey is worth accomplishing. What's at the end of my journey is worth the name, the identity I have at the end of my journey, my destination, because your journey, your destination is going to be a, an accumulation of all the small things you've done throughout your life. It's not just going to be one big event the day before you die. Your destination is going to be an accumulation of everything that you have done, everything that God has used you for. So there's going to be moments that you're going to have to stick it out because it's going to be difficult. And if you weren't conflicted, if you wasn't facing some kind of adversity, you probably wouldn't be tempted to make a big change. If you had a big decision right before you, the chances of you being on the right course up to this point is probably um, close to accurate for the simple fact the devil doesn't fight what he already owns. The devil doesn't destroy what he's already got custody of. The enemy is out to destroy the kingdom of God. The enemy is out to destroy as much as he can. He knows he can't destroy God. He knows he doesn't, he doesn't match God's power. So the only option he has left is to try to destroy the works of his kingdom in the world, in the people of God. So if you're not being conflicted, then maybe, you know, you wouldn't have a big decision, but the fact that you have a big decision to make or you have a fork in the road says that there is something pulling you both ways. And now the, the decision is, what do I do? Do I stay the course or do I step away? It may be that the best and most rewarding decision that you can make is to stay the course, even when it would be so much simpler to walk away. And the Old Testament gives us a great, great story of, of, of staying the course. And, and it's, the it's in the book of Ruth. Um, you know, there was a woman um, by the name of Naomi who had two daughters who was uh, Orpah and, and Ruth, uh, or two daughter-in-laws, I'm sorry. She had two sons, and, and the, her sons married Orpah and, and Ruth. Well, Naomi's husband had died. And then down the road, these Moabite women who were married to her sons, um, you know, had been, been together for a long time, and then something tragic happened, and both of Naomi's sons passed away they died and and you know at that time a widow without children was pretty much without hope or without an opportunity because society was not set up for women to work so a woman was dependent on her husband and her children um for income and then um if her husband died and her children died she was without hope so it wasn't like Naomi could just try to make ends meet with the job at a coffee shop or, or getting a job down at the local deli. She was in a bad situation. So out of love and out of a, she understood her grim reality, out of love for her daughter-in-law, she told them, she said, listen, my children, my sons have died. You, you know, you, you girls, there's no sense in you staying here. I'm an old lady. There's no sense of you staying here with me. And, and, and going through the grief and pain that I have to go through, you go, as young women, you still have time to go and find you a husband and live out the rest of your life happy. And Naomi was doing it, you know, because she didn't want to drag these people down. And Orpah, you know, rightfully so, we can't argue with her decision. She took her mother-in-law's advice and she left and she went back on to doing it. But Ruth saw things a little bit differently than Orpah saw it. Even though it would have been so much easier for her to go and to, and to get another husband, she, ch she chose instead to say to st or, or to stay and to stick by her mother, her mother-in-law. She chose to stay the course and say, you know, she said, um, look, uh, Naomi told her in Ruth chapter one, verse 15, look, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. 
and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. That's Ruth 1 verse 16. So when Ruth tells Naomi that she's going to stay with her, it's, it becomes serious. See, she's committing to this life. She is not only committing to walk with Naomi. She said, your people will be my people. Where you go, I'm going. Where you stay, I'm staying. Your people are going to be my people and your God is going to be my God. See, when you commit to the course, there are going to be some things that radically shift in your life. And there are going to be some other people that don't like unstable ground. They don't like not knowing the next step that are going to try to pull you away or drag you away because of the shifting sand. But what is, what is, when things are shifting, it's not always a sign that something is wrong because a sifting is the shifting of the negative away from the positive. When something gets sifted, what is no good falls through the cracks. What is good stays in the basket. So so, so hear me this, this evening when I tell you that, that the, the, the situation you're in, when it becomes, begins getting shaky, when things begin, begin getting rattled, it's not a sign that you have made the wrong decision. It may be a sign that you are, are staying the course and that there are things that are crowding you because the wisdom of man would say, do what is easy and what is simple. But the wisdom of God says that, that, that you know, the, 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 the kingdom suffers violent and the violence take it by force. You know, we, 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 this kingdom suffers violence and we have to take it by force. There's days we have to walk and stay the course and we have to go in with our swords drawn. And we have to know that I am not going to my left or to my right, though 10,000 may fall at my left and another thousand at my right. I will, it, it will not come nigh to me. You know, I will be okay. I will keep pressing. I will keep pushing. I will keep going in. You know, you got to be like David sometimes. Be willing to sit in the cave when everybody who was once your buddy is looking for you so that you will be killed. So you got to be, there's got to be days that you say, I won't give up on my anointing and I'll fight whatever's in my way because you have to stay the course. See, it would be very difficult to commit to something and to keep walking away. Because number one, for people around you, they're going to look at you as an uncommitted person and it's going to look terrible on the image that you try to portray. And hopefully, if you are a follower of Christ, you're not worried about your image. You are worried about his image. And if you make God's image look uncommitted, what is that going to tell the people you preach to? What is that going to tell the people that you try to give scripture to? I've heard people, amen and hallelujah, and clap their hands and run to the altars every Sunday, but yet they choose to continuously live a sinful life. And they do it not caring what the image that they're portraying of Christ is. That's not the real Christ that they're portraying, but for an unbeliever who is seeking help and hope, that's where confusion set us in, and it gives the enemy power. So the, the going back to the story, Ruth told Naomi, she said, I'm not going back, I'm staying. I'm staying. You know, it would be difficult to overemphasize just what a big deal this decision was for Ruth, how costly it was. Her decision was to become a beggar less than a slave. She said, I would rather be a, a beggar with Naomi than to go serve gods and get another man that'll take care of me and live out my life. I'd rather be less than a slave in the, in the land where you dwell, Naomi, than to go back to where I'm from and be accounted worthy. I'd rather be a nobody here than a somebody on my way to hell. I'd rather be a nobody in the world and bought with the blood of Jesus than to be a somebody in the world bound for hell. It was very costly for her. Can you imagine choosing the life that Ruth chose on purpose? There are people that are stricken with poverty and stricken with, 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 with bad situations that, that, that are out of their control. They didn't choose it. Uh, it. It might be where, you know, maybe the nation that they're living in is poverty. Maybe the pandemic has things broken in their life and around them. So many things that play a part. But at the end of the day, can you imagine choosing that lifestyle on purpose? And Ruth, something in Ruth said, I must stay. I cannot walk away. I lost my husband and, and, and 
I have the right to go, but I don't want to. I want to stay where I am. See, there was something bigger in Ruth's under vision or understanding. So she adjusted to her new life in a strange land, and she went out into the fields after, you know, after the harvest and was getting the scraps. And one day there was this man named Boaz, and he saw this little cute woman out there picking some of the leftover corn, and he, he says, okay, I'll, you know, she's getting, leave, leave a little more. She's getting 30-fold. She's getting thirtyfold. So she went from being a beggar to getting thirtyfold of the field, and then, and then a little bit later down the road, he says, "You know what? She's, she keeps coming back, and I like this young lady. There's something about her I like. So I tell you what, give her sixtyfold. Leave, leave sixtyfold. So she went from being a beggar to getting thirtyfold, from getting thirtyfold to getting sixtyfold." And she, she stayed the course and she kept pressing. Some of you right now, you're on the brink of your 30 fold and you're thinking it's not enough. It's not going to be enough. But, 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 but God is just going to, just going to keep blessing you if you'll stay the course and the 60 fold is on the way. And, and, and if you'll keep staying the course, like Ruth stayed the course, she went from, from being a beggar to being a, to being a 30 fold recipient, to being a 60 fold recipient to down the road, she become the owner of the field because she was married by the man who owned the property. So I'm here to tell you today that even though your journey gets difficult, even though your journey gets tight, even though your finances get hard, even though the school subjects get hard, even though the job is tempting you to quit and tempting you to give up, you done put too much time. You've done invested too much of your life. You've done invested too much in your ministry to hang up the, the towel and walk away now. But you've got to press in and push in because what you've been working for, God said that you are an heir of the throne. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And and he owns the cattle of a thousand hills and the hills thereof. The earth is his and the fullness thereof. He shall make the earth his footstool. Now imagine yourself fighting in a weary world to one day is going to be the footstool in which you sit. My God, I feel the Spirit of God saying, stay the course. Don't give up. Don't quit, but press in. When they start fighting you, fight back. God didn't make you a quitter. He made you a fighter. That's why he called you a, a soldier, and, and he calls you a warrior, and he, he give you the arm, and he give you a sword, and he give you the power to tread, and he give you the power to walk on water, and he give you the power to command the winds and the storms and the seas to obey, and he give you the power to lay hands on the sick, and they recover power. Power to raise the dead, power to speak in tongues and give interpretation, power to reach the lost, power to let folks know that the end is not their circumstance, but the but the beginning is their life with God. My God, I just I'm just having church, y'all. Y'all forgive me. Praise the Lord. So Ruth stayed the course and she gained more than she thought she would ever have. Not only did she get blessed. But now, guess what? Naomi was no longer a beggar. See, the fact you stay the course, it may not be just you that gets the blessing. It might be you that brings re restoration to one other person or 100 other people or 1,000 other people. But if you give up and you walk away today, how many people are going to stay beggars? How many people are going to stay lost? How many people are going to give up? How many people are watching you right now and wondering, what's what? man, I see him. He, he's going through a lot, man. She's got so much on her plate. She's done lost so much. He's done, he's done had to give up too much. What's he going to do? What's she going to do? And the decision that you are about to make is going to be a message that rings in the ears of your audience because they're waiting to see how you will handle it. There's something about you that brought their attention. And they're watching you to see if you're going to give up or are you going to give in. So can I encourage you tonight? Stay the course of God. Don't. I'm not telling you to stay um, in bad situations. I'm not telling you to stay in bad relations. I'm not telling you to stay in, 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 in terrible places and with terrible jobs if they have no God in them. But what I am telling you is don't let your emotions guide your decision because God might have you in a Hosea moment, a Hosea season, when God told Hosea to marry a prostitute because there was a message that needed to be preached. You are a blessing to somebody else. You're a child of God, but you are a blessing to somebody else. 
because you are what God is going to use to reach something else. So the question that you have to ask yourself tonight is, should I stay? Should I stay? And I can't answer that for you. Number one, I don't know everybody's circumstance. I don't know everybody's situation. I don't know what your prayer life is like. I don't know what you've what you've been doing. I don't know where you've been, what where your mind's been. I don't know how much word you've been eating. So I, without me knowing those things, I can't give everybody watching right now one answer that's going to fit everybody's need. But I can tell you one person that hears everybody individually, and his name is Jesus Christ. If you'll talk to him tonight, I believe that he will speak to you. I believe he will lead you. I believe he will guide you. And listen, if he's guiding you to walk away from a season in your life because there's a journey you are about to start, don't, don't think, well, I'm quitting and that's not what pastors... Please don't take what I'm saying tonight out of context. Should you stay the course that God has for you? Because the course God has for you may have you jumping hurdles, meaning I might have to jump from one ministry to the next ministry because there's a need to be filled. I might have to jump from one one um, title to the next title. I might have to jump. I might have to. I might have to move. I might have to go in and tell my kids we're going to church Sunday. I might have to go in and do something. We're gonna. You stop staying at home. We're gonna quit staying away from the word. We're gonna quit doing things that doesn't line up with God. And listen, if you if you are in a moment, a moment, I just feel the urgency to say this. If you are in a moment or a situation or a relationship right now that you have been living outside of the direction of God, whether it's, you know, with someone you're not married to, whether it's with uh, maybe you haven't been um, the, the mother or the father you felt like you should have been. What, listen, um, God is, is he, number one, he's already seen and he's not ashamed of you. He, he doesn't want you to be ashamed. But what I do feel like God is saying is if you was talking to these people, whether it be your children your, 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 your significant other, whatever this person, this thing or situation is, if you would talk to them, the answer that you need for the next step will be in their reaction. If they can support the fact that you spent time with God and he spoke to you and he led you to make things right and they can't support that, chances are that that's something that needs to stop so that you can start the right thing. And then when you start the right thing, you stay the course. So uh, I don't know who that's for. If there's, uh, if there's somebody on there, I hope that, that that has helped you, blessed you. I promise you that is not in this teaching, never has been. I've te taught this class three times, and I have never had that. So uh, that just kind of, that's just free, extra cookie, and you don't have to pay for it. Um, but um, the question you have for yourself tonight is, should I stay? I want to leave you with this comment right here. You, you, right there, you, you. Yep, you are not a quitter. You are a finisher. You are not a quitter. You are a finisher. You are going to finish what you have started. You are going to accomplish what you have set out to accomplish. You are going to find prosperous ways. And I'm not talking about worldly prosper. Worldly prosper comes and goes. But the kingdom that prospers you is far greater and far outweighs the blessings this world will give you. So... My blessings to you tonight, and I pray for you, and I pray that God will just rain down showers of mercy and grace upon you and let his face to shine upon you and hide you up in the shadow of his wings and that he will mount you up with wings as eagles, that you will run and not be weary, that you will walk and not faint. I pray that he will set you up with hinds feet that you may walk in the high elevations of places that you will, that you will go up, amen, into the firmaments of heaven and dwell where his spirit will be there also. All of those cool, fancy things that we could read from the Bible that excite us. I pray those things on you. So I'm going to pray for you now, and I'm going to let you go. I'm, I've seen so many people say that they needed this tonight. I'm going to tell you, I didn't realize how much I needed it until I began speaking it tonight. And it was fresh to me. So um, I'm, I'm right there with you. Thank you. And, and all glory goes to God because um, what he done tonight was not me. It was him. So, Father God, I just thank you for these wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people, God. These warriors, these these. Uh, confident, these um, disciplined, these uh, determined um, children, Lord, that are yours, Lord. These are your children, and God, you have birthed them into a new life, a new creation, and you have 
done away with their old life. You've done away with their old name and their old identity and their old sin. And God, you have paid for them a righteous way. And Lord, I just ask that you give them the wisdom and the strength and the ability to walk in the way that you have planned. Lord, your word says that a good man's steps, a righteous man's steps are ordered by the Lord. And I pray, Lord, that we would delight in your way today, God, that we would move as only you have told us to move, that we would, we would continue the course, that we would be able to, at the end of our life, be as Paul said, and says, I have run this race. I have finished my course. Now there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Oh, Lord, I long for the day that I see your face, and God, that I get to uh, just hear your voice say, welcome in my good and my faithful servant. And God, those that stay the course are, are guaranteed to hear that because, Father, you never fail us. You never leave us and you never forsake us. Lord, I ask you to be with each and every listener tonight, God, whether they be Northwoods home folks, maybe, maybe they're visiting in tonight. Lord, maybe they just logged on for the first time. Lord, wherever they come from, you know who they are. You know why they needed to hear this. And God, I pray that you give them the, the direction and the wisdom needed, Father, for their next step. Because the greatest decision that they'll ever make in their life is their next one. So God, I ask you, Lord, to just have your divine way in their life. Right now, in Jesus' name, we give you the praise, we give you the honor, we give you the glory. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in. Pray for me and my wife uh, and our family. We will be going off the grid here for the next couple of days. Praise the Lord. And uh, getting some uh, downtime, a little uh, R&R, &R, and uh, we are excited about that, spending some time with the Lord and His beautiful creation. So we love you. We are going to miss you guys, but I pray for you. Don't forget, church starts Sunday morning, 1045. Come ready to worship. Come ready for hear a word. Come ready to be lit on fire for God and to stay his course and to move out as only he can. God bless you. We love you. Have an awesome night.